Thanks for joining us at 4.30. The news continues with Live at 5. Next, after announcing a plant closing, Harley-Davidson reveals the rollout of a company fir first when a cutting-edge bike will hit the road. Live at 5 starts now. Right now, from Milwaukee, this is today's TMJ4, Live at 5. Right now at 5, failures at the Milwaukee Health Department raising concerns over lead exposure. A lengthy report details how the department may have put children at risk for lead poisoning. Carrie Mahone spoke with community advocates who are pushing for more awareness. She joins us live with more. This report gives us a look into how these issues happened, citing things like underfunding, low morale, and staff turnover. The next step is a full outside audit of the department, but in the meantime, community groups say all of this awareness will hopefully lead to more families taking action. There were two children, at least two children that we know of, that were allowed to return to a home um, that we had not tested um, to make sure that it was lead free. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett says he intends to act on the issues he's learned from this 50 page report released by the health department. What's most concerning for local advocates is the number of children who could have been harmed by lead while the department went through these issues. You know, for the families who've been harmed over the last few years, you know, we're very upset about that. Robert Miranda formed the Freshwater for Life Action Coalition at the end of 2015. He says he's been contacting the mayor's office since then, asking for more to be done about lead in the community. I'm advocating for all of these issues to be equally treated. But I will say that the big two, yes, I would say paint and water. According to last night's report, about 70,000 homes have lead laterals in the city. That's nearly half of all homes in Milwaukee. In 2016, the city began distributing free water filters for families in those homes. The Social Development Commission is one of the places the city works with to give out filters. They say the lead investigation hasn't affected their operation. Right now we have about 180 left that we hope people come down and get. The outside audit of the health department still needs approval from the full common council. That's likely to happen next week. The council will be asking the mayor to sign off on that audit the same day and hope by the end of February it will begin. Carrie Mahone, today's TMJ4. Take a look at this video. Another example of excellence from a bus driver with the Milwaukee County Transit System. A woman had a seizure near 76th and Mill Road. Her six-year-old daughter screams for help. An MCTS driver, Michelle Mixon, jumps into action, comforting the little girl until help arrives. You'll get to hear from Mixon coming up on Live at 6. Harley Davidson plans to close its Kansas City motorcycle assembly plant. Workers, many with 20 years on the job, found out this morning. Company officials say roughly 800 jobs will be eliminated. But the company also announced the rollout of an electric motorcycle in the next 18 months. Carrie Mahone spoke with industry experts today. Here, she's live outside Harley's headquarters with more. Carrie? Car companies have been rolling out hybrid and electric vehicles for the last several years with the pressure to become more efficient and environmentally friendly. And now Harley is really stepping headfirst into the realm with today's announcement. Could that be the sound of the future of Harley-Davidson? CEO Matt Levichich said the company known for their rumbling motors will dedicate 25 to 50 million more dollars to developing and rolling out an electric bike similar to this 2014 concept. It, it was awesome. Milwaukee Harley General Manager Goran Zardrima was one of a few people who got to test ride the prototype a few years back and supports the company's move to produce it. That bike was fantastic. I was one of the advocates. That I wanted them to make it. Zardrima says there was interest immediately. There was a lot of buzz. There was actually people look, calling to buy it which is kind of neat to see. It's wide appeal is what's prompting Harley to invest in it, especially as their need to grow ridership uh, becomes even more and more urgent. Business Journal reporter Patrick Leary spoke with the Harley CEO this morning, who was also looking at the interest the concept bike spurred. What Matt Levitich said uh, this morning that really struck him about those demos was it was reaching a really diverse group of people. So could this rumble soon be in the rearview mirror for Harley? Experts don't think so. There's this weird 
thing you feel when you're done riding a motorcycle. It's really hard to explain, but it's, it's, it's uh, I don't know what chemical releases in your body, but it's a great feeling. Harley couldn't say where the new bike would be produced. On a side note, despite the declining sales numbers released today, the Harley dealer we spoke with says he saw a record number of people signing up to take classes to learn how to ride. Maggie? Thanks, Carrie. Tesla is looking to sell its vehicles directly to customers in Wisconsin. Under current law, vehicles must be sold through dealerships. This bill would allow the company to open its own retail shops. The Wisconsin Automobile and Truck Dealers Association is pushing back, saying the bill would hurt dealerships. Milwaukee Tool is looking to expand. That will mean 350 new jobs. Milwaukee Tool says the jobs could include construction of a 114,500 square foot office building on 3.5 acres across the street from its headquarters in Brookfield. The project could cost $32 million. President Donald Trump will deliver his first State of the Union address tonight. He's expected to talk about the economy, tax cuts, immigration and border security. Carrie Mahone joins us now with the preview. Big expectations for the president's first State of the Union address, with Republicans and Democrats having different expectations. It's a big speech. President Trump set to deliver his first State of the Union address with an official theme, a safe, strong and proud America. The White House promising a bipartisan tone as President Trump is expected to cover a variety of topics, including tax cuts, immigration, the economy and infrastructure. This will be my 20th of these that I've sat in. And I've got to tell you, uh, to be able to hear a State of the Union as bright as it is right now is something that's very encouraging. But not everyone sees it that way. The state of our precious union is fractured. It's divided. And the president has the responsibility and gets the credit for making it that way. Several lawmakers plan to skip the address. I will not attend the State of the Union because this president has not honored nor respected the office of the presidency and has shown total disregard for our democratic institutions. Others say this is about more than just a speech. Whatever speech you make has to be followed up with policy. Other lawmakers have invited young immigrants to put a face on the DACA issue. Some members of Congress will be dressed in black, some bringing victims of sexual assault, highlighting the Me Too movement. Massachusetts Representative Joe Kennedy III will deliver the official Democratic response. The 37-year-old is seen as a rising star in the Democratic Party and comes from one of the most prominent families in American politics, the Kennedys. NBC News coverage of the President's State of the Union Address starts at 8, here on today's TMJ4. Still ahead on Live at 5, the man who once led authorities on a 10-day manhunt learns his fate. Give him the truth, but I'm not raising my hand. What does that mean? Did a jury conclude right. Joseph Jakubowski is a danger to the public? We'll have the latest from Rock County. And next, the TSA reports a record amount of firearms discovered at airports across the nation. We'll break down the numbers. You're watching today's TMJ4 with Carol Meekins, George Mallet, Storm Team 4 meteorologist Brian Goddard, and Lance Allen Sports. The Transportation Security Administration found a record 3,957 guns at airport checkpoints last year. That's nearly a 17% increase over last year. On average, more than 10 firearms were found each day. 84% were loaded. A guilty verdict for the man accused of stealing almost 20 guns and leading authorities on a 10-day manhunt. Pete Zervakis was in the courtroom when the verdict for the 33-year-old Joseph J Jakubowski came down. Joseph Jakubowski sat silently at this table as a jury here in Rock County found him guilty of three felonies. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joseph Allen Jakubowski, guilty of burglary as charged in the first count of the information. That verdict came after about an hour and a half of deliberation. The jury finding Joseph Jakubowski broke into Armageddon supplies in the town of Janesville and made off with 18 firearms. They watched this surveillance video of the crime one final time during the prosecution's closing argument. Was this one of the easier cases that you've 
prosecuting? You know, we certainly had good facts. Jakubowski previously confessed to stealing the guns. His attorney hoped to convince jurors that he didn't do so with the intent to harm anyone. I don't believe he's dangerous right now either. Following the burglary, Jakubowski led authorities on a 10-day manhunt. It did not end until they found him camping out on private land about 130 miles northwest of Janesville and only five of the 18 missing guns were with him. Certainly there was a significant risk to the community um, with those weapons that were out in the community, the ones we haven't yet uh, recovered. Now the judge in Rock County could sentence Jakubowski to up to 24 and a half years behind bars. Jakubowski remains in custody at the Rock County Jail. He'll be sentenced at the end of February. In Janesville, Pete Zervakis, today's TMJ4. The Rock County Sheriff's Office says deputies are searching for two people accused of stealing from the same store Jakubowski broke into. An alarm went off around 10 last night. The thieves took at least seven handguns. Placing wagers on the Super Bowl may be illegal in most of the country. But that's not stopping a windfall of colossal bets on the big game. We are doing some math on the Super Bowl 52 in a moment. Americans are expected to wager a record amount of money this year on the Super Bowl. And experts say roughly 97% of that total will be gambled illegally. The American Gaming Association expects Super Bowl 52 to bring in about $4.76 billion in total bets. Of that, 97% are expected to be illegal. Betting on this year's game is expected to surpass last year's total of $4.7 billion. The Patriots will be going for championship number six. The Eagles are trying to win their first Super Bowl. We will have coverage leading up to and after the game. Team USA Hockey will be led by a Wisconsin Badger. Kerry Mahone has the Olympic profile. Wisconsin has a long tradition of Olympic hockey, but this year Tony Granato will lead Team USA with a heavy heart. For Wisconsin coach Tony Granato, there's no better honor Oh. than representing your country. What does it mean to you to be the Team USA Olympic hockey coach? There's no better honor. Um, there was no phone call I was more excited about than, than the one I got this summer from Jimmy Johansson. Jim Johansson was the general manager of Team USA Hockey and a teammate of Granados at Wisconsin who passed away in his sleep on January 20th. He specifically chose Granado to lead Team USA. I think the American people will be really proud of our team when it's all said and done. For the first time since 1998, the U.S. will not use current NHL players, hearkening back to the miracle on ice. Our players will be reminded of it a lot. I think they've watched the movie Miracle. They understand. They know who Mark Johnson is. They know who Mike Caruzioni is and Jim Craig is. Yet the task is straightforward. Our goals are to win, win a medal. Granado will coach the Admirals Bobby Butler, who made the squad. Team USA's first game is Valentine's Day, February 14th against Slovenia. What says Valentine's Day better than some hockey? Next in, Next in sports, Lance <laughs> Allen has some surprising comments from Brett Favre on the state of, the, of play in football. The excitement continues to build around the Bucks on a roll, and now Jabari Parker is set for his season debut against the Knicks on Friday night. Whether it's coincidence or the spark the Bucks needed, Joe Prunty has led the Bucks to a 4-0 record since Jason Kidd was fired. Granted, the road hasn't been daunting with wins over the Suns, Nets, Bulls, and Sixers, but you can only play and beat the teams on the schedule. Um, it's good, you know, maybe two or three, maybe two days before. Then I'll get in that mentality, but right now, you know, it's a lot of stuff that I want to get under my wing. You know, just, just trying to take advantage of a few more days to get better. During Super Bowl week, concussions, still a major topic. Today on CNN, when asked about making the game safer, Brett Favre said one solution, don't play. How does one make the game safer? How do you make the game safer? You don't play. Um, you know, I mean, is that going to happen? No, I think the NFL is here to stay, obviously. Um, and that being said, I think we, we have 
started the ball rolling, if you will, in the right direction um, by instituting a, a concussion protocol. Brewers GM David Stearns mentioned it at the Lorenzo Kane press conference on Friday. Ryan Braun is open to trying first base at spring training. He still mainly play the outfield, but here's Braun on the position switch. How open are you to playing a little bit of first base? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm open to playing anywhere they want me to play as long as uh, I'm comfortable and, and, you know, serviceable defensively there. Um, but, you know, obviously I'm open to whatever makes the most sense for the organization, depending on what our personnel ends up looking like uh, come the start of the season. Being able to play multiple positions is hopefully something that will benefit us. Um, but we'll have plenty of, you know, open, honest dialogue and conversations as we go to make sure that it makes sense and, and that uh, it's something that's going to work for the team. That's it for sports. We are back after the break. Tonight's Badger 5 jackpot is an estimated $36,000. Coming up on the now at 630, a new workspace in our area that's only for women. Tonight, the creator shares her inspiration and mission to help local ladies take their businesses to the next level. That's coming up on the now. Here's what's on TV tonight. After the now, it's Ellen's Game of Games. The President's State of the Union address is at 8. Then join us for more local news on Live at 10. All right. Speaking of that all-women workplace, we kind of have one of our own here tonight. Definitely. I know. Very powerful, especially with all the, you know, women's movements going on right definitely, now. Definitely. You know? Definitely. <laughs> all right. Thanks for joining us on Live at 5. The NBC Nightly News is next. <laughs> this is breaking news now from today's TMJ4. That breaking news, a multitude of failures in Milwaukee's health department leaving kids at risk for lead poisoning. From kids allowed back into dangerous homes to families not notified of their children's high lead levels. It was all revealed during a sudden news conference called by Mayor Tom Barrett. Maggie Glenn covered the session and joins us live in the newsroom. Rebecca? Oh. We were just handed a 50-page report a few hours ago. There are pages of problems outlined, but the biggest? Children fell through the cracks that left them at risk to even more lead contamination. Just two hours after receiving a report detailing problems with the city's childhood lead poisoning prevention program, Mayor Barrett spoke to the media. The report details how the program failed the most at-risk children. There were two children, at least two children that we know of, that were allowed to return to a home um, that we had not tested um, to make sure that it was lead free. Those two kids, along with 30 others, had to undergo a therapy that removes the lead from their bodies. According to the health department, it is imperative that children receiving therapy return to a lead safe home environment, and the MHD is responsible for assuring that. The mayor says dozens of homes were not assessed after kids tested positive for high levels of lead. Right now there are at least 30 addresses in question and this number could potentially grow to a little more than 100. Meaning the city now could be in violation of state statute. That is just one of a dozen findings from the audit. It also explains how more than 6,000 families of children with elevated lead levels should have received letters explaining next steps. The report says underfunding, regular staff turnover, and fighting with community partners are just part of what is hurting the program. But the mayor hopes and to ultimately make changes from it. I did not ask for a report to sugarcoat what the issues are. I asked for a report to identify the problems, and, and that's what we've received. And I intend to act on these issues. That's what I intend to do. The mayor will go over the report with the Common Council later this week. He says the two children who went back to an unsafe lead home did receive medical treatment, and the problem was fixed. Milwaukee families that need lead help should call 414-286-8800. New at 10, carjacked in a cemetery. You threatened an old person with a gun, threw him to the ground, tried to stomp on him. What goes through your mind? For some reason. That's what happened to that 75-year-old visiting his wife's grave site earlier this month at Valhalla Cemetery. 
Maggie Glenn talked to the heartbroken man about the experience. She's live at 91st in Silver Spring. Carrie, police say the carjacking happened here in the middle of the day, a little before 2.30. This isn't the first time there have been problems here. I feel I was violated and my wife was violated. The grave site is violated. Almost every day, Dale Lobbs comes here to be with his late wife. The 75-year-old was reading by her grave at Valhalla Memorial Park earlier this month when two men struck up a conversation about their dad passing away the day before. So I just said, you have my uh, condolences. After asking about the cost of a grave, they had another question. Hey, is that your car? I'm like a dummy. I said, yeah, I should have said no. It started to rain. When Lobs got in his car, a man opened the passenger door and said he had a gun. And my reply was, do what you want to do. I'm 75 years old. I don't give a crap what you do anymore. Lobs says he let go of his steering wheel for a split second. The young jerk put a hand on the collar of my coat, had a hand there, yanked me out of the car, threw me to the ground, tried to stomp on me, but he missed. And then they both got in the car and away they drove. Similar crimes happened at this cemetery in November 2016. We couldn't get a hold of the owner, but it appears they added surveillance cameras and locked the second gate. Police say two men, 17 and 21, are arrested in connection to this carjacking. And all that while visiting my wife at the cemetery, a sacred place to me, a safe place to me. Some people don't have a conscience. Labs got his car back, but he's selling it after what happened. When the suspects stole his keys, they also took a keychain with his wife's name on it that Labs gave to her 25 years ago. The DA's office is reviewing the case. Maggie Glenn, today's TMJ4. An abrupt and bizarre end to proceedings today in the Joseph Jakubowski trial. Jakubowski is accused of stealing 18 firearms from a gun store in Rock County and leading authorities on a 10-day manhunt. In court, he claimed he wanted to testify in his own defense, but then refused to be sworn in on the stand. I'll, I'll give him the truth, but I'm not raising my hand. What does that mean? All right, then he will not testify. Do you like not to testify? He does. The jury and attorneys are expected to return to court tomorrow morning for closing arguments. A Milwaukee man is now facing charges in connection with a deadly shooting in Menominee Falls over the weekend. The Milwaukee County District Attorney has charged 23-year-old Demetrius Gordon with homicide. 24-year-old Dontrell Burnett was shot Friday afternoon near Pilgrim Road and Interstate 41. According to the criminal complaint, Burnett was in a vehicle with Gordon's ex-girlfriend. Gordon allegedly shot at Burnett after he ran from the vehicle. Gordon then drove away from the scene. Police arrested him Sunday. A diabetic reaction causes a seven-year-old Illinois driver to crash this evening while driving on I-41. Chopper 4 shows you the scene of the accident. Police says the driver swerved through traffic before hitting the center median cables, causing him to lose his front tire. He kept driving on three wheels before eventually stopping. He was taken to the hospital for treatment. Buck's rookie Sterling Brown will not face charges after his arrest last Friday. Brown was tased by police outside of Walgreens near 26th and National. Police say Brown was illegally parked across a handicapped space. The Milwaukee Police Department's Internal Affairs is investigating the officer's response during the incident. Your Milwaukee Bucks are about to get a boost of star power to their roster. Maggie Glenn is here to tell us about the return of a 6-foot, 8-inch power forward named Jabari Parker. That's right, Carrie. Everyone has been waiting to see when Jabari Parker was going to get back on the basketball court for the Milwaukee Bucks. We're told that today he will play on Friday night when the Bucks host the Knicks at the Bradley Center. So the wait is over for the former number two pick in the NBA draft back in 2014 to get back on the court after he tore his ACL for the second time back in February of last year. It's been a long road back for Parker, who has been rehabbing hard to get himself medically cleared to play again. He was averaging 20 points a game before he got hurt last year. So that good news for the Bucks coming up in sports. We'll see if the Bucks could keep their winning streak alive, hosting the Sixers. Guys, back over to you. It is Super Bowl week and the festivities continue in Minneapolis tonight. This is a live picture of U.S. Bank Stadium, where in just six days, the Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots will square off. 
right here on today's TMJ4. On the Eagles roster, an alum of Milwaukee's Riverside High School, Maggie Glynn is standing by live. Maggie, a lot of people here rooting for Philadelphia Eagles offensive lineman Brooke, Brandon Brooks. That's right, Ariel and Carrie, but as I found out tonight, no one is a bigger fan than his mom, who lives in Mount Pleasant and is headed to watch her only child play in the Super Bowl. Behind this tough man is a strong woman. Don't forget your roots, you know, don't forget you weren't always at the top. Those are just some of the things Dorothy Brooks instilled in her son, Brandon, who's ready to play in his first Super Bowl. I am so nervous. She loves sharing memories, like how Brandon was wearing clothes for a one-year-old when he was just three months. He was like a young. little fat teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> he was. I mean, look at the rolls on him, yeah. see there? Um, He's gonna kill me. At 28, Brandon is now 6'5 and 340 pounds, but he's more than football. Dorothy is proudest of his kind heart, bravery to share his struggles with anxiety, and his strong mind. Brandon earned his college degree before the NFL and still takes classes and does internships while a pro athlete. To me, that I can't even say how proud I was of that. She set the example going back and getting her master's degree while working full time when Brandon was in high school. This week, she's taking a few days off, already packing for Minneapolis, bringing her jersey that she gets other players to sign while she waits for Brandon outside the Eagles locker room. Because you know how he is. Oh, mom, why you got to do that? I asked her if she has any good luck rituals before games. She says she just says a prayer before each game and tries to have fun in the crowd with fans, just like she did back in high school here at Riverside. Ariel? Thank you, Maggie. Of the tens of thousands of people headed to Minneapolis, 70 of them will be from New Berlin, based GMR Marketing. This is the company's 31st Super Bowl. Their job, to find ways for their brands to connect with consumers. And in true football fashion, they have a playbook. This is our Super Bowl playbook. And so really what this details is we're going to have nine clients and 17 different activations up in Minneapolis. And this is a kind of step-by-step, minute-by-minute instruction. Inside that playbook, an event called the Farm Bowl, being put on by the firm's client, Landa Lakes, it's a competition where NFL players, former, like former Packer Greg Jennings, will be teamed up with farmers to compete. We're covering all of the local Super Bowl stories leading up to the big game. For those, look at, or those all week long, today's TMJ4 is your exclusive home for Super Bowl 52. Could fitness trackers be putting U.S. military personnel at risk? Coming up, why the Pentagon is looking into claims that GS, GPS technology may be providing a potentially dangerous roadmap to our military bases. Plus, the emotional comments that have one local sheriff in issuing an apology tonight. And next, worse in Wisconsin, where the flu is hitting us the hardest and the outlook from doctors. The Tonight Show is next. Here's Jimmy Fallon with a preview. Hey guys, Dakota Johnson is my guest tonight. Plus, we have NBC nightly news anchor Lester Holt. Music from Jason Aldean. It's a great show. Stay tuned. Fun. A warning from health experts tonight, the worst of the flu season is still not here. That after a 64-year-old Waukesha man died recently from the flu, the number of cases are growing. Wisconsin is averaging close to 100 flu hospitalizations each day. The northern part of the state is being hit hardest right now, but it could move our way. We aren't that much better at getting our flu shot. So I think that it's just we have not seen the peak of our influenza activity here in the sou southern region or the southeast region. So potentially the worst is yet to come, unfortunately. Doctors say it's not too late to get a flu shot. The Pentagon is reviewing the use of exercise trackers worn by military forces. The Washington Post reported an interactive online map can show the locations and activities of people wearing fitness watches. That's raising security concerns about soldiers and other personnel at U.S. military bases in sensitive areas. Kenosha County Sheriff David Beth issues an apology after making this strong emotional statement last week. There's some people that aren't worth saving. 
We need to build warehouses to put these people into it and lock them away for the rest of their lives. Sheriff Beth now says he let his emotions get the best of him while talking about the arrest of five suspects, accused of stealing $6,000 worth of merchandise from the Pleasant Prairie Outlet Mall. The arrest came after a chase by sheriff's deputies in a grinding crash. In a letter sent to today's TMJ4, Beth said, in part, even though my comments were not meant to offend people, I can see how they may have. I will always be passionate in my defense for the vulnerable and the victims, but I will do my best to not let this happen again. Quite a rescue operation in Austria today. 150 skiers had to be brought to safety after being stuck for several hours on a broken chairlift. It took authorities nearly three hours to free the skiers. The Cleveland Indians are dropping Chief Wahoo from their uniforms. It comes after decades of complaints that it's racist and insensitive. The red face caricature has been used by the team since 1947. The logo will be off the uniforms at the start of the 2019 season. A key figure in the ongoing tension between the White House and FBI is stepping down. FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe will re remain on the FBI payroll until he is eligible to retire with full benefits in mid-March. McCabe has endured withering criticism from President. Friends say he was under a lot of pressure from FBI Director Christopher Wray. A last-minute scramble before President Trump delivers his first State of the Union address tomorrow night. There was a misprint on the tickets. Instead of union, the tickets said union. New tickets are being printed and redistributed. The Olympic flame continues to wind its way through the cities and towns of South Korea on its way to opening games in Pyeongchang next week. One of the torchbearers flew his name on a hot air balloon. Coverage of the Winter Olympics on today's TMJ4, now just nine days away. We're counting down to warmer temperatures again. Maggie Glenn's got the storm team forecast. Thanks, Carrie and Ariel. All right, so tomorrow things are expected to warm up a little bit. It's supposed to get all the way up to 43, but with those warmer temperatures comes that slight chance of rain and snow. Thursday and Friday, it dips all the way back down to 19 and 15 with another chance of snow. On Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we're back to those typical, now February, temperatures. And tomorrow morning, actually, at 7 a.m., try to look out for the super blue blood moon. But unfortunately, that slight chance of rain or snow might have some cloud coverage that might prevent us from seeing that. So, something to look forward to maybe tomorrow morning. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Maggie. Yeah. Next in sports, the Bucks look to take advantage of a Sixers team playing without their superstar. The Milwaukee Bucks getting some great news tonight that Jabari Parker will play on Friday night when they host the Knicks at the Bradley Center. So the next order of business was could they get their push their winning streak to four straight with a win over the Sixers at the Bradley Center. We pick it up in the second quarter. Bucks playing behind for most of the first quarter. Giannis is going to muscle his way in for the tough bucket inside. Bucks up to later Giannis bringing the ball up and finds Jason Terry deep in the corner pocket and he knocks down the trifecta. Milwaukee up 37 to 34. Same quarter on in the inbound pass. Chris Middleton wide open. Count it. Milwaukee up 55 to 53 at the half. Middleton with 19 points. Second half. Sterling Brown rises up and hits triple. Bucks up 88 to 75. He had 10 off the bench. And then Giannis showing off that range. Nothing but the bottom of the net for him. He had 31. Bucks beat the Sixers tonight 107 to 95. That's four straight wins for them. Let's head into college hoops with the Badgers hosting the Nebraska Cornhuskers at the Kohl Center. Second quarter, Khalil Iverson going baseline for the jam. Badgers up 55 to 44. Nebraska would play strong down the stretch. James Palmer Jr. with the layup 60 to 58. Nebraska comes back to beat Wisconsin tonight though 74 to 63. We move on to Packers news now where safeties coach Darren Perry is leaving the Green Bay Packers to pursue other opportunities according to head coach Mike McCarthy today. Perry has coached the safeties in Green Bay since joining them back in 2009. 
And the defending Super Bowl champion New England Patriots have landed in Minneapolis today as they prepare to defend their Super Bowl title against the Eagles on Sunday. Tom Brady will be looking for his sixth Super Bowl ring. You can catch the game right here on today's TMJ4. Coming up in our second segment of sports, a move the Brewers made that could strengthen their bullpen this season. That's coming up after the break. Diving straight down. 